Spectrami is, is a young entity. Uh, I won't say it's a startup anymore because we're into the third year of operations. Um, Spectrami uh, was started with, with a vision, you know, with a plan. Uh, as I said, you know, I, in, the, in the past decade, I have worked with distribution, I have worked with vendor, I have worked with resellers. And I realized that, uh, especially in the Middle East, which is different uh, in so many ways than, than the major markets like the US and the Europe, uh, there was a gap in terms of uh, the niche and specialized technologies. You know, uh, uh, and that's where we found, uh, where, where we could add value uh, as Spectrum. You know. um, we are a value -add distributor uh, based out of UAE. Uh, but uh, value -add distribution, I say, is one of the most abused words as well. You know. and everyone today likes to call themselves as, as a VAT. But with all due respect, you know, everyone adds different value. The mainline distribution company for them today value is about credit, warehousing, logistics. Uh, or if we talk about uh, the, the next generation bad, which people say giving you a, a dedicated pre-sales resource or, or, or a product manager, and that's what they add value. But if you, uh, if you, if you want to look at bringing in new technologies to this region, uh, you need much more. Uh, and what we call today our model as VEM, which is vendor extension model. You need to be able to replicate the success of the vendor in the markets and customize it with the local conditions here. So you have to look at every facet of the business. You know. and you're talking about, uh, when you're talking about sales, you also need to make sure that uh, obviously channels are one of the key aspects. Uh, that you work very closely with them, you enable them through hand-holding for first few deals. You do uh, a lot of pre-sales activities with them, you do technical workshops, uh, make them understand uh, how to position the product, how to how to go about uh, doing the proof of concepts. Because obviously most of these sales in the initial stages require a POC to be done. So it's a lot of technical enablement, sales enablement with the channel partners. Identifying the right channels is one of the keys to your success in the region. Apart from that, you also need to go and evangelize with some uh, high, high touch model with customers. You know. The whole objective is uh, we don't transact with customers, but at times we engage with the customers just to make sure that, that uh, the customer is aware about the new products and solutions that we have bought to this market. Uh, we help in, in, in doing the proof of concepts and the RFP seeding. And obviously, everything is rooted at the end to, through a reseller or a channel in, in the local country who is more focused with us. The objective is twofold. You know, uh, obviously, we also want to make sure that the channel understands that there is a market for it. Uh, they get the confidence that yes, this product can be sold. There is there is a, a strong need for it within the customers, and and that helps in turn for channel to dedicate much more focus and commitment to, to our technologies and, and grow with it. Our our model is 100% uh, channel. Uh, we don't do any direct business. Uh, obviously, we engage with customers directly at times, but but uh, the transaction happens only through resellers. So uh, that's the sales side. Uh, we, we do have a strong uh, technical team, uh, which is headed by uh, Safras Kazi, our technical director, wherein we have the, uh, the design team, which is more of a pre-sales arm, uh, and the sustenance team, which is the post-sales arm. But that is very critical. Uh, you know, the customers today here want local support. They want a number or a person to be whom they can connect locally for the L2 and L3 support. Uh, most of the 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 vendors are a support is based out of Europe and that's a challenge. That's a challenge for, for the reason that they don't work on Saturday, Sunday and here some of the countries don't work on Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So obviously you're just left with three, four days of, of common working days and in that there's a time of difference of four hours or three hours. This effectively is very little time where they can communicate during working hours. So from that perspective it's important that they have the local support and that's where we, we come in and we say okay fine we, we invest in, in, in the post sales uh, 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 services as well where we can make sure that the, the customers and resellers get the right support uh, also uh, because our technology is a niche you know till the time the resellers get uh, enabled enough and confident enough to do it on their own we do offer implementation services to our channels uh, so that th th they can have the right uh, you know, uh, solutions implemented uh, to at the customer's site so that, that's on the technical side. On the marketing side, we do a lot of activities. Right from day one of inception, we had a marketing team in place. And you don't see that, that coming over a period of time. But we were very clear. We knew that you know uh, it's, it's just not about these two aspects, but also that you should be able to reach out to your customers. You should be able to generate the, the awareness about the brand, about the technology, 
and also do some some uh, events uh, which would help generate leads so that we can pass on to our resellers and uh, see more opportunity pipeline growing so uh, and and we have an inside sales as well so this is this you don't see that in distribution scenario where we have a dedicated inside sales which team which speak to the customers which speaks to the partners on a continuous basis uh, on on various uh, technologies and offerings that we have um, and then we went ahead and, and we did something more which which is, is very encouraging for us in terms of response that we've got is about building up the CEC customer experience center. So what we've done is uh, we've, we've invested heavily into uh, building a small data center and a managed services desk from in our office uh, wherein we offer uh, the, the partners and the customers you know, a, a place where they can come and see the system like working. Uh, if you look at one of the technologies active here that we represent which, which talks about backup in minutes and restoring minutes. Now, that's unbelievable, you know, in a today scenario where customers have to uh, take eight to ten hours to back up solutions. Now, obviously, the first thing they would say is, "Show us, you know, show us the proof." And to, a P to do a POC of that is a very complex procedure. So what we did is we put the systems like Oracle, uh, Exchange, SQL, all the things in our, in our network along with us uh, the solution. So we are able to demonstrate that in our office in a ready-made setup. So the customers can walk in; they can not only see the systems working for all. it's not only for active view but all the technologies that we currently represent that they can see the systems working live you know before they go ahead and do a POC but also meet with experts so we have vendors coming in and setting out ways out of our office so they interact with them you interact with experts so it's, it's just about whole overall experience for customers to understand that yeah there's a technology that works there are a set of people behind the technology uh, uh, who will help them support in case of you know uh, any, any eventuality and that's very important. Today I feel uh, the, the customers in, in Middle East are more concerned about the post sale. What happens if they buy the technology and it, and it does not work? Whom should I contact? Are there people present locally or there is the support mechanism available? And that's where we make sure that, uh, that there's a proper uh, system in place through the CC or the managed services desk where we can help the customer remotely as well. So, so that, that's whole uh, vendor extension model which I was talking about and that's where we feel we are different. You know? We are different, and, and that has helped really helped us. Uh, if you look at uh, you know the recognition that we've got in the short span of time, um, we, we have been uh, recognized by uh, vendors, uh, the customers, the partners, and the media as well. If you look at the, some of the awards that we got, we got the Emerging Distribution of the Year Award from from Channel Middle East, from Isla Middle East, from the Integrator Magazine. We got the uh, best EMEA partner award from Active Fio, which is a, which is a very great recognition. And we have some done some some great business, uh, and and the growth that we have seen in our business has really justified uh, our belief. So if you look at the training, uh, I would say uh, training is just one aspect of of uh, of why you know or. or uh, it, it's, it's all about technical enablement, you know, uh, because we are into uh, technologies that are very niche and specialized, uh, it's important that you have continuous interaction with the customers to understand, to make them understand how it works in this scenario, how to use the technology. From a channel perspective, it's, it's very important to, to work very closely with them, do all the, all the trainings on a regular basis, what we call as workshop, technical workshops, to, to help them position the product rightly with the customers. You know. There's very little knowledge and skills available in this region as far as those technologies are concerned. It's not like Cisco or HP or Microsoft, where you know, there's lots of information available. You know, they have very established players. These are very niche and specialized. So it's important to have that element into your business plan, wherein you're able to enable your partners with all the right set of tools, including you know, setting up a demo, doing a POC, the positioning of the product, the post-sales support. So training becomes an important element of, of the business. That, that's a very interesting question. Uh, obviously when we started, uh, we, uh, we had a lot of interaction with, with the customers and that's how you know, we have built our portfolio. You know, uh, and, uh, during that exercise, uh, we felt that security and storage are some of the things that, that will see, see a real uh, need uh, and, and a revolution in the market. And that's what is happening today. You know, uh, Today, if you look at the customers, uh, they are very much concerned about security. People are just uh, saying that traditional way of, of uh, the system that they have put in their environment 
is not working anymore. You know, um, the firewall and IPS are good enough, uh, but not uh, meeting the requirements as for the new trends of uh, threats that are concerned like APT and, and targeted attacks. They don't, they don't help them secure that. So yes, security is going through a turn. Uh, and coming back to storage, yes, um, storage is another area. We are seeing storage explosion happening across the customer's environment. You know, the customers are, you know, are not able to understand where, where, where the storage explosion is happening. Uh, at the same time, storage has, has, has been traditionally very stagnant in terms of any revolutionary technology coming in. But of late, yes, uh, we were very sure that we wanted to get into the nation specialized space. So as uh, when we started with storage, we found ActiveView as a company which is very revolutionary. It's changing, uh, you know, the landscape, the way you know the, the uh, copy data management happens. You know, uh, at the backup, replication, deduplication, all those aspects of snapshots. You know, how the data is completely radicalizes the, the the copy data management. And then we're looking out for new solutions that obviously have help. So um, today, yes, uh, our uh, portfolio of solutions we look at are five technology that we represent mainly. Uh, four of them are from security. Uh, but yes, we would be announcing very soon relationship that we, we would be getting into partnership with one of the vendors, who's again very very strong and upcoming uh, niche player in storage space as well. We have a vision towards uh, developing the business in the security and storage space. So that's that's the two domain that we want to be in, security and storage. And in this domain, again, we want to be associated with niche and specialized technologies. We, we, we cannot handle a commodity business. Uh, our business model does not support uh, the way we have structured our business and the way we are developing our business model. So uh, we are very uh, particular that those niche and specialized technologies, uh, uh, those should be from those, uh, and the customer should be, you know, seeing it as a different new technology that is coming to the market and helping them do what they have not been able to do today. So uh, yes, security and storage and niche area in those areas is something which we would add. Yes, one of the criteria, uh, it should be recognized by analyst. Uh, obviously, you know, we all know uh, Gartner has a very, very high reputation in this market. Uh, there are other, in, in other analyst groups as well which are very recognized. Even though there's no local references uh, of this technology that we bought, that's, that's manageable. But they should be highly recommended by the industry experts and uh, analysts. As far as we're concerned, uh, we are exclusive. Uh, to uh, most of the technologies that we represent. Uh, uh, it is because of the simple fact that we were the first ones to bring these technologies to this market. So the vendors trust us, the vendors believe that you know, uh, we are the right partner for them uh, and that also helps us because uh, these products require very focused and committed resellers as well and, and because of uh, the, the sole distribution that we have currently we're able to manage the channels well, we're able to support the channels well in terms of having better margins, in terms of uh, committing on the resources and in it, it's, it's working well. You know. But having said that, you know, every, every, this is an evolution that goes, right? There's a new technology that gets launched, so someone needs to evangelize with customers, uh, build the market up and then after a while it moves into established area and becomes a commodity. So in the initial days is where, where this kind of system really works. See today, how do you differentiate between resellers? How do you differentiate between uh, you know, uh, your, the customer offerings? There are, there are multiple basic uh, things that a customer is looking at. Customers, when they go to reseller, are looking at what value can they offer to them. Do they know much more than what the customer is aware about? Can they can they understand their pain areas and bring in and technology that can meet the requirements? So yes, what we have today been been successful in bringing those technologies are something which the customer needs, which the customer is asking for. If you look at APT, uh, uh, this is something which is very hot. Every customer wants to look at how can they protect themselves from target attack, and that that's where Fidelis comes in, right? If you look at correlation and, and, and uh, event management, which is present for logarithm, that's again a cust where every customer is budgeted for it or, the, or they are looking to procure it in, in this financial year. If you look at uh, copy data management, yes, that's going again, again something which is, which is people are worried about in terms of the storage explosion and how they can optimize their current resources without 
going in for new uh, storage uh, procurement. So everything today, if you look at from all this DLP again, data leakage prevention is, is very hot because of the government compliance that is coming up. Saudi, as far as I, I, you know, the information is there, InfoWatch, which, which released a report a few weeks back, is saying that Saudi in the next three to five years would be a 400 million dollar market for DLP. So these are these are things which are driven by customers. So today, if you look at reseller, resellers, you know, wants to look at new avenues because they have sold enough of the basic infrastructure solutions. So the customer already has those basic solutions in place. Now he's moving to the next level of requirement. And that's where he needs to look at our solutions that, that probably uh, would differentiate not only among the competition within their domain, but also help the customers meet the new requirements.